Landscape photography is not cheap. You have to buy a camera, lens, tripod, filters, backpack, all the hiking gear. And then you, you also have to invest constantly in going places or going to workshops to reach certain locations to photograph. So all that investment needs to have a return and the return is good photos. Now a way to obtain good photos is to learn from your own experience and this takes time and trial and error. But you can also benefit from the knowledge of other photographers. So in the video from today, I'm going to share with you three things that I can guarantee you 100%. The minute you start applying these three things, you will see an improvement in your landscape photography. So thing number one is what you see with your eyes is not what the camera sees with the lens. Now, let me ask you something. How many of you have been in this situation? You pass by a beautiful landscape, you see something interesting, you stop, you take your camera out, you photograph it, you go back home, you open your photo um, on your computer and you look at it and you say, why have I stopped there? There is nothing interesting here. Well, let me tell you what happened. The minute you stop there, you see something with your eyes and then those images are sent to your brain. Now the brain is the element that will interpret those images and this interpretation is based on your own experiences, on the music you listen, books you're reading, uh, movies you're watching, your current state of mind, your emotions, the way you feel at that moment. So this is the filter that those images go through. And then the brains present to you um, a version, an interpretation, because you're going to see and you're going to focus your attention on, on some elements and you're going to um, uh, just exclude from your attention other elements. For example, if you're going to see a beautiful sunset inside a town and you look at it, you only see the sunset, you don't pay attention to the cables or all the other distracting things that are happening inside the town. So I hope I, I made this clear. The minute you're photographing, but you're not um, making a conscious decision, you don't really understand what the brain is showing to you, so, and you just start photographing, it's a, very, it's a very small chance that you're going to photograph according to what you really see. And that's why you need to ask yourself, what am I really looking here? Because when you give yourself an answer, then you make a conscious decision on what lens to use, at what focal length, at what aperture, where's going to be the focus and so on. So you're going to make a certain uh, series of decisions based on that initial question. What is the, the, the point of interest here? Now this will take time to give yourself the best answer as possible, but that's the beauty of landscape photography. And you will also learn to know yourself to learn you you learn what you really like and this will help you also develop your own style and in time you will also don't need to put this question every time you take a photo it's just going to come natural it's like second nature and you'll just apply it you'll, you'll identify subjects and you'll also think about okay i need this lens at this focal length and i'm going to do this and i'm going to do that and believe me this will improve your photos a lot and thing number two um, is search for a composition without a tripod well a landscape photographer i always say you need a tripod you always need a tripod the tripod will ensure clear uh, and sharp photos in any conditions and remember that we as landscape photographers, we're photographing mostly at f8, f11, sometimes even f16 or f22 if uh, it's necessary. So the exposure time is going to be rather long and the light can drop really fast and those exposure times can go really, really long. So you always need a tripod as a landscape photographer. The problem with the tripod is that it doesn't allow you to change the position fast. So I'm going here, I'm testing the composition. I want to go there, I want to stay up, I want to stay down. If you're doing this with the, with the camera on the tripod, the time that it takes you to uh, 
shorten the legs, move the legs around and all that thing, it loses some of your creativity. And uh, this is a minus of the tripod. Also, this is the plus of a tripod because it forces you to, to stay calm, to think about your shot, to plan your shot. And let's give photography, it takes a lot of planning and waiting for the perfect light. So the tripod, it's, it's, it's a really good tool, but it has a minus that it's also a plus. When you're searching for the composition, you need to take your camera from the, off the, the tripod and you're very quickly moving around and just looking for a better composition, looking for a spot from where to photograph, sitting low, sitting high, or quickly go up on a, up on a rock or something like that. The minute you decide on the composition and the spot and the exact position from where you're going to photograph, okay, you can go and put the camera on the tripod and do all the other things. But believe me, if you apply this thing, you see that you, you, the way you're thinking is, is changing a lot. Uh, and it's very different from when you have the camera on your tripod. And now, thing number three, and that is edit with intention. During my workshops, um, I saw lots of photographers that edit with no intention. And how do I know this? It's because uh, when I ask them, what do you want to do with this photo? Sometimes there is no answer. I'll just wing it and see the result. And sometimes it's an answer like, I'm going to increase the contrast and I'm going to check the white balance and see if there are no uh, clippings to the left and to the right and the highlights and the shadows um, and then see about the saturation and that's it. And this is not editing. Now look at editing at digital development. Now if you're, if you're going to search for some videos or some information of what is happening or what, what happened in a dark room the minute the photos were developed and printed on a, on a piece of paper, you're going to see that those photographers really, they were really thinking of something. They were darkening some areas, they were, they were uh, introducing highlights in other areas. So they were crafting the composition and they were guiding the attention of the viewer towards a certain uh, spot. It's the same thing in paintings. So the first step that you will have to do is look at other photos of good photographers and also look at paintings the old paintings old landscape paintings and you start to analyze them logically what is happening there with the light where is the light where there is darkness where is there is saturation and when there is not saturation so build a, a database if you want of information of what is possible with a photo these were three things that i think are really important and if you apply them, your photos will improve greatly. Uh, but if you want to learn more about landscape photography, I also have an ebook, and um, I talk about composition, about choosing a subject, and I use 50 case studies to illustrate these points. Uh, the link is in the description of this video. And until next time, if you want to get better, just keep on photographing because it's the only way that you can get a, that, that you can be a better photographer. Thanks for watching, and bye bye.